Hi guys and welcome back to Introduction to Mechanical and Automotive Engineering. I'm your lecturer, Dr. Elizabeth Kiriakou, and today what we're going to take a look at are the geometrical properties of our, a beam's cross-section. And why do we want to know this? We want to be able to determine what the geometrical properties of the beam are so that we can determine the stress in the beam. So if we have a, a beam and it is supported by a roller and a pin, we're going to have reaction forces. And we apply a load to this beam. What's going to happen? We have going to have bending. So my beam will bend. To determine um, the bending stress in a beam, we need to take a look at the cross section of this beam. So if I just draw a simple beam, we're just going to have a rectangular uh, cross section. So this is my cross sectional area. So depending on the application um, of our beams, we we're going to have different types of cross sections. So perhaps we have like a T bar or an I beam, a U beam. And depending on um, our application, these are going to change. So we need to find out what are the geometrical properties of these cross sections. So there's two things that we're interested in. First of all is the first moment of area, which is the um, centroid. So first moment of area. And that's the centroid. And secondly, we are interested in the second moment of area. Which is also called um, the moment of inertia. So when we take a look at the centroid of the beam, we want to know what is the geometrical centre of this object, of this cross section. Okay, so this will be the centroid C. And it will have a coordinate system of x, y. The moment of inertia is the ability for a material to resist bending. Okay? So, moment of inertia, we want to be able to resist bending. So, let's take a look at um, the stress equation for um, bending, and this is actually called the flexural formula. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to take a quick look at this equation and see why the geometrical properties are so important. Okay, so for bending stress, to be able to calculate our bending stress, we're going to use the flexure formula. So sigma is going to equal minus ny on i. So sigma is my bending stress, m is my bending moment, which we will take a look at um, next week. But today what we're going to take a look at is how to calculate I, so my moment of inertia. And Y is a distance that we're measuring um, from the neutral axis.
So what we're going to take a look at is this, and this is called, we can call this S, and it's actually the inverse, I on Y. And this is called our um, section modulus. So we can see that the stress in a beam is dependent on our geometrical properties. So this describes um, Okay. So let's just take a look at what happens when we um, have bending stress. So if I have a beam and passing through the centre of my beam, through the centroid, I'm going to have, so this is my cross section, it's just a rectangle, this is my centroid, it's at the centre. This line here is called my neutral axis and it passes through the centroid. So what happens at the neutral axis? At the neutral axis the stress in the beam is actually zero. So here is zero. We can just label that as an A. So if I'm actually going to bend this beam, what's going to happen to either side of the beam? Let's just make some room here. So if I now apply a load, this beam is going to bend and this becomes my neutral axis because it's still passing through the centroid. And if I take a look at my cross section here, what do we have? So. At the top of the beam, when we apply a load, here, we're going to have a compressive stress. And at the bottom of the beam, we'll have a um, tensile stress, so we have tension. So if I take a look at the stress profile produced from this bending, this is what it's going to look like. So we know that um, compression acts away from um, a body. Sorry, wrong way around. Compression acts towards the body. So we're going to have, um, we know that here at the neutral axis, the stress is zero. So it's going to go towards the body. And tension acts away from the body. So again, at the neutral axis, it's going to be zero and we'll have this profile. So on the outside of the beam is where we're going to have the maximum stress on both sides. One will be in tension and the other one will be in compression. So first thing that we're going to take a look at is how to calculate the centroid, so the gravitational centre of the beam. And then we'll take a look at how to calculate the um, moment of inertia of the beam.
Okay. So let's take a look at how to calculate the centroid. So it's not too high. Sorry. So the centroid of an area is the gravitational centre of that area. So we're going to have an axis system, so y and x. And if I just have an arbitrary shape, this shape is going to have a centroid. So here is the centroid, and it will have its own axes. So we'll call that x and y, and we'll call this one x bar and y bar. So this becomes x bar and y bar are arbitrary. Axes. So I've chosen where this axis is actually going to be. So to be able to calculate the centroid, we need to um, create an axis system, so then we have a reference point. So what will happen is the distance from here to here is going to be x bar, and the distance from here to here, the height, is going to be y bar. So, if this is my centroid, where does the neutral axis pass through? It passes through the centre. So this is my neutral axis. And this is where the stress equals zero. Okay. So how do we calculate um, the centroid in a beam? So, first of all, I defined a reference plane, and if I now take this geometry and turn it into like just a simple um, rectangle, it's just right there. so for um, simple geometry, it's actually quite easy to calculate. Um, where the centroid is. So if this is C, I need to find x bar, y bar, and I will know that this is my x bar distance, and this is going to be my y bar distance. The other thing we need to take into consideration is the actual cross sectional area of my cross-section. And for this one, it's just simple, we've got a rectangle. So I can write the, um, to find the centre, or the centroid, sorry, of the beam, we can find that x bar equals x a on a, and y bar is going to be equal on A. So this is for um, simple geometry. However, when we have a, um, a composite area, so maybe lots of uh, like a IB or a um, T bar, let's take a look how to calculate it. and then we want to take a look at the composite area. So I'm not writing on the screen. So here we go. The 
centroid, so like that. And we're looking at composite. So if here I have a, a T bar or a U bar, I can actually reduce these um, composite areas into just simple geometry. So here we have one rectangle, and here we have another. So each um, rectangle is going to have, or geometry is going to have, its own centroid. So the top one here will have centroid here, call that one. Still have its own centre. Oh, let's see too. So we need to determine where the um, um, geometrical centre is, and we're going to have to calculate this point here. So to calculate that, we're going to have um, x bar going to equal the sum, because we need to add up the two geometries of x bar i, a i on the sum of all the area, and to calculate y, it's going to be the sum of y i, a i, divided by the sum of all the areas. So this rectangle has um, an area of length times breadth, we can call that one, and this one also will have an area of length times breadth, we call that area two. So when we look at these equations, what is it telling us? The numerator actually describes the individual geometry. And the denominator describes the total area. And if we want to be able to calculate this, we need to put this on a um, arbitrary axis, which we just set here. So it'll be x bar and y bar. So once I find um, my x bar and y bar, I'll be able to find where my centroid is. And what passes through my centroid? My neutral axis. So if we take a look at this um, composite area, we can also break that down into um, different simple geometry. And our centroid will be somewhere in here. And once again, our neutral axis will pass through the centre of the centroid. Okay, so let's take a look at a quick example and see if we can calculate the centroid of a composite area.
Okay. So here we have a um, upside down U beam. And we have dimensions of um, twin mil. And on the other side. And this is 25. And here we have 150. And we have one more dimension in between here, and that's 200. So everything is in millimetres. So I'm going to divide this into some just simple geometrical rectangles and see how we go. So I'm going to take this geometry and this geometry. So to make things um, simpler, we actually have symmetry occurring here. So if I um, draw a reference plane and axes here, that's my x-axis and that's my y-axis. So I know that I can actually set um, my centroid x bar can be zero, so I've assigned that. So that's my zero point. And so what we need to do is find y bar and how do we do that? We can say sum of um, the y components for each individual centroid multiplied by the area for each individual um, rectangle divided by the total area. And a really um, simple way to do this is to draw it up in a table. So I need to label this, so we can call this one, two, three. So each rectangle or each area is going to have its own um, individual centroid centre. That's going to be C1 and that's going to be C2. So let's drop a table. So I'm going to have three uh, parts. So one, two, three. And then finally, I'm going to have the sum of, where I'm going to add them all up, like the sum. And the first thing I need to calculate is the actual location of um, my y distance, and that's in millimetres. And then I need to calculate the area for each um, simple geometry, so AI, and that's millimetres squared. And then finally, I can multiply these two together to give me the top part of the equation. So I'm going to have AY bar AI. And that's going to be millimetres cubed. Okay. So this is my um, reference axes that I've set up. And the first thing we need to do is um, let's take um, the cross section of the rectangle for number one and AY is going to be for one, oh, let's just fix this up.
So for one, the distance to the centre from my reference, so this is my reference, so everything up here, this is zero, and I'm calculating everything up. So this is like having a um, grid. So if this is zero, then my height is going to be 150 plus 25. So the maximum height is going to be 175 millimetres. So the distance from the reference plane to here is 75. For geometry 2, it's also going to be 75. And to um, my geometry 3, um, it's going to be 150, and the centre of here is, from there to there, is 25 divided by 2. So I'm going to have 150 plus 25 on 2. To calculate the area for this geometry, it's going to be 20 times 150. It's going to be the same thing for this geometry. And for 3, it's going to be 240 times 25. So if I add all of these numbers up, I'm actually going to have the sum of the area. And that's going to be 1, 2, 0, 0, 0. If I want to calculate, if I multiply this by this, so the y distance multiplied by the area, I'm going to have um, each component of um, the numerator of the equation. So here we're going to have 22,500, and this one will be the same. And if we multiply those together, This is here is some of the area, and this here is the top part, which is sum of y bar i a i. So if I want to calculate y bar, what am I going to do? I'm going to do one four two five zero 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 divided by four hundred. So y bar is going to equal um, 119 millimetres. So what am I going to do? If this is my zero, I'm going to go up 119 millimetres. And this is where cx, yx is going to be. And this is where my neutral axis passes through. So the centroid is going to be 0, 1, 1, 9. That's it. So um, let's just um, end the video here and I'll start up a new video for uh, moment of inertia.